In my last video, I was kind of experimenting a little bit with Next.js and trying to see if I could build out a form with validation without using any client components. I figured out a solution, but honestly, I think just using a client component is the way Next kind of intends everything to work. And more specifically with Next 14, they give you some hooks that you can use. I think these actually come directly from React. Um, one of them is called use form state, which I'm going to kind of discuss in this video. It's kind of important to understand. And then the second one is use form status, which you can use for kind of showing loaders on a button when your form is submitting. So just to demo what we have, if I submit this form and I don't fill in any information, notice that it gives us some validation errors. That's using Zod behind the scenes. Pretty straightforward. If I were to type in some information here, I'll do like 140. I get some more validation saying the number must be less than or equal to 100. So I'll just do like 50. And notice that when it does successfully submit, we get a nice green alert here and the action finishes fine. So one thing I want to point out as well with this implementation that I'm going to share with you in this video is if I turn off JavaScript, if I do the same logic, I go ahead and click submit, notice that I still get the exact same validation, which is pretty nice. I mean, some applications don't care about like not having JavaScript enabled or disabled, but you may work on a project where let's say it's like a government project where they have a strong desire to have the application work with JavaScript disabled. This is also a solution you can do with what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's look at how the code works, right? So we have a page here that renders out this form and this is a client component. So I have use client at the top of this component and inside of this form, we start by creating a use form state hook and we pass it a server action. So what this kind of does is it wraps your server action and provides some additional functionality. So you can use this action synchronized with this state of the form, okay? This is kind of like the state you can use to pass data between your action and the actual like render um, run through, from what I kind of understand. And the second argument is the initial data that you want form state to look like. So in this case, we're gonna say message is blank. We don't have any form errors and we have some blank field values. Okay, so scrolling down a little bit, I have an effect. So anytime this form state were to change, I check the message. And if I get a success back in that message property, I'm gonna go ahead and just reset the form for the user. And then down here, we have the form. Pretty straightforward, we have an action that's pointing to that server form action, which you can see up here, this is just a destructured array. And the second element of that array is your form action, which kind of just, again, is a wrapped version of this action, which I'll share in a second. So putting the action here in this form, when you submit this, it'll call the action, the action will do some stuff, and then the action returns a new state, right? It'll return some new properties here, some new values. And I use those to determine when the alert should be displayed. I use those to determine when this red border should be put on the inputs, when this little hint text underneath the input should be displayed. Yeah, so that's how that's kind of working. And also, a little bonus, I have a submit button that uses a use form status hook. So this is a way that you can basically have a loader or a spinner show up when you submit your form um, without having to add in like your own custom spinner logic or spinner functionality. This is how you can do it. So if I go back and actually do this, you should see real quick that the submit will turn to a submitting button. It was super quick, but if I had a slower uh, machine, let's just do like a slow, and click it, notice that it does go to submitting and until the server action finishes, it'll stick there. That's kind of the overview of the form. Let's go ahead and look at the action. Inside of this server action, we basically take in two arguments. The first argument is the previous form state. So this is gonna be, again, you know, it has a message and errors and a field values because that's what I defined um, in this example, but you can kind of define it however you want. And then the second, argument is going to be the form data. So that's actually like what the user submitted in the form. And when someone submits this form, we basically get the form data. In this case, I'm getting name and age. And then I'm running that through a Zod validator, right? So I'm making sure that the data that was passed in through the form matches a particular schema. And if this schema doesn't match, for example, if they sent in a string for age, that'll go ahead and go to this catch block where I check the Zod errors, I flatten them, which gives me this nice error map where I can kind of just grab the first error that were to happen when the validation failed. And then I return this object. So this is kind of like the key part of this whole video is in your action, you want to return a new state object and you can use various things on that object to designate if errors are happening 
if you should show alerts, what you should show, etc. So this is the error case where I basically say, okay, this form has these type of errors on them. I need to show um, some type of error alert somewhere. And then I'll talk about this field values here in a second, but I just want to point that out that if everything is successful, again, we just return message success. That'll show that green alert. We do errors undefined, and then we also do field values and kind of clear those out. So hopefully that makes sense, right? The server action runs, it validates the input, it returns some data. This thing is going to update with that new data, and then it's going to re-render your React component where it's going to hide or show things. And then finally, it'll create the HTML and send that over to the front end, which is going to show the changes. I would say this is kind of the way that you should be doing forms, in my opinion. Um, the other approach, obviously, is you can just do like an on submit here. You say on submit, and you could call the server action directly if you want to, like this. In fact, you would kind of bypass all of this. You just do a submit form action here, and then you can do like an await on it. You could do like a try catch around it, handle some error states. But then you end up having to just basically create your own use state hooks and store that error states in its own special place. So this is kind of a convenient way to do it with less code. I find it pretty nice. All right, so now let's talk about the field inputs. So the reason I'm doing this um, is only because I was playing around with like, if I were to disable JavaScript, let's just go ahead and turn it off. I'll say disable JavaScript, refresh the page. If I were to go ahead and do this and I don't know, leave this blank and type in 30, notice that when I click submit, it actually clears out the value I just had entered, right? Just to kind of exemplify that again, let's just do it again. I had 50 typed in here and it got deleted. The reason I'm returning the basically the same values that the user submitted was so on my inputs, for some reason I forgot to add these, I can actually interpolate those values from form, form state. I can say field values and I can say name. And then down here I can do the same thing with age. So now as we're like submitting server actions and we're getting response back, what this allows us to do is if JavaScript is disabled, and I were to go ahead and submit the form, notice that I don't lose that context anymore. It sticks around because the server action is returning the previous values that I submitted. And so I can keep some inputs kind of on the screen by kind of doing that approach. Now, one thing I'll mention is that when JavaScript is disabled, I mean, this use effect is never going to work. So the form, you know, keep that in mind. Stuff's not going to run when JavaScript is disabled. But luckily for us, for some reason, when, you know, everything is successful, the page will refresh and the form will get cleared out because we are clearing out those uh, field values. So hopefully you guys learned something from watching this video. I just wanted to kind of share with you two of the new hooks that you may be using. Um, I'm sure you've been using them already for a while, but there's use form status for basically showing a spinner or a loader on your form or somewhere on your page. And there's use form state for basically keeping track of the previous and the current state of the form which you can do things that I kind of demoed here in this video um, when JavaScript's turned off, et cetera. So I think this is the approach that I might start doing going forward. I still need to play around with like, is there a better way I can kind of make a wrapper or helper with Zod here? Um, but if, if having your application runnable without JavaScript is something that you care about, um, you may end up doing something like I just demoed here. So that's all I got. Just wanted to make a video for you all. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out with other, other developers and ask questions. Other than that, yeah, have a good day. Happy coding.